Dear viewers, uh, we have with us uh, uh, Sapnil Srivastava, who is the founder of um, Uravu Labs, a company which is into uh, what you call water production. That too in a unique way. Why it is unique? They are harnessing water from uh, air, and this technology is making what we call a disruption in the humanity's life. So how they are going to do it? We will have a discussion with the Sapnil Srivastava to understand more about the technology involved, how they are making it into a business use case. Mr. Sopni, please share your thought, how you conceptualized this very Uravu Labs. Uh, I heard that it was a, a project during your engineering days. And from there, you made a business model. Now, how the company is growing? Can you share uh, the thoughts that sure. uh, uh, were behind this very uh, idea? Sure. Uh, so if you look today how mm. humanity sources water, yeah. we are mainly looking at surface water from rivers or lakes and then that will be you know shipped, piped to a centralized water treatment plant and from there through underground pipes water is distributed. Okay. Now this was a system which was you know kind of established by Romans yeah. and you know almost has been 1500 to 2000 years. Very good. And to, till today we use the similar kind of system which is very centralized. Yeah. Now. When that water infrastructure is not present, a lot of humanity depends on groundwater sources. Correct. Where they dig a bore well and start taking out groundwater. If we go by the facts, India today relies 80% on groundwater for its drinking, industrial and, uh, and agriculture needs. Correct. And then groundwater is depleting really fast. Absolutely. And uh, while we were in natural college, we also faced you know, similar experiences where our college campus ran out of water. Okay. And then authorities had to call water tankers to our campus. Mm -hmm. And because there were like so many you know, students, faculty, staff there, we were just rationed one to two buckets per day. Oh my God. So we live like that for almost, you know. So it is a necessity, it's the yes. invention because of the necessity. Correct, correct. correct. Yeah, very so good. that nudged us to explore what can we do next with water solutions. Okay. Uh, and uh, we were always, you know, very much technology driven. Okay. That, you know, what could be the new innovations in mm -hmm. the water space that could drive the next few centuries. You know, while right. you had this centralized water in pipe infrastructure many centuries back, uh, reverse osmosis purification technologies were developed in 1950s. True. Absolutely. Correct. And so what could be the next big, you know, uh, step we can take in the water technology space. So that was the idea we started with, born more out of necessity, passion and curiosity. Very good. Uh, so we started working on that uh. and today we have scaled it to 3000 liters per day. Hmm. And the idea is that our solution presents an offering where you don't have to rely on existing water sources. Okay you can transport water as minimally as possible. Very good. So, for example, today Bangalore gets water from Kaveri River, which is 200 kilometers away. Mm -hmm. But with the air to water solution, you can make water on site or as nearby to the customer base as required. Okay. So, the transportation of water is also minimal. Right. So, in a way, it's also shortening the supply chain. Right. While not relying on existing water sources and giving you the highest quality of water possible. Okay. Very good. So, here I want to ask you a question on the tech pieces that you have integrated here, both uh, hardware and software. Sure. Please uh, explain so that a layman can understand. Harvesting water from air is somewhat uh, uh, what you call uh, a Disneyland-like uh, idea. Correct. So please explain to our uh, audience, wider sure. audience, to understand the technologies, hardwares and softwares sure. involved. Sure. Uh, so water from air naturally happens also in many ways. Correct. Currently you will see uh, if a very cold surface is there, some water droplets will start condensing on it. Yeah. So that gives us the idea that air has moisture always present. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the quantity of it, it's almost six times what we have in all the world's rivers combined. Okay. So the huge quantum of water. Yeah. And the good part is that in just eight to ten days, mm -hmm. all this water gets replenished naturally. Okay. So it's a very fast cycle, becomes an infinite source. Oh, very good. How Uravu uh, harnesses this water from air is, we use something called as desiccants. Okay. Desiccants are materials which have a high affinity to absorb water vapor from the air. Very good. So when you pass uh, air over these materials, they will absorb water vapor molecules from the air. Mm -hmm. So we use something called as a liquid salt solution. Okay. Which readily absorbs moisture from the air. Okay. And then once that solution is saturated after absorbing the moisture, we apply heat at about 65 to 70 degrees Celsius. Okay. 
this heat can come from various renewable energy sources like solar heat, mm. uh, biomass waste, mm. waste heat from industries. Okay. You can even convert electricity to heat using a heat pump and then power the device. Very good. So when you supply heat at 65 to 70 degrees Celsius, all the way, water vapor which was earlier absorbed gets released almost in a steam-like form. Okay. And this we just then condense into liquid water. Okay. So the only uh, energy required mainly 90, more than 99% of it is primarily heat driven and you still require a bit of electricity for the fans and pumps, mm. you know, which make sure that the air is coming into the chamber okay. and interacting with the desiccant and the pumps make sure that the liquid desiccant is also flowing around mm -hmm. so that it can, you know, then first absorb the water and then release it later. Okay. So now this good part is in our solution is the salt we use is a naturally occurring salt. Uh, very affordable, uh, doesn't pose any harm to the environment. Right. So it can be reused multiple times and even at the end of life could be disposed of easily. Mm -hmm. And because it's primarily driven by renewable energy, mm -hmm. we can be sure that you know it's a zero carbon solution very and remains sustainable for you know throughout its life cycle. Okay, very good. So here I want to ask you how you have come up with the business model and uh, how you are serving the clients. Uh, sure. uh, uh, going forward, how it will it be hmm. sure uh, so if you look at you know water as a commodity hmm. it cuts across various industries applications correct and you know there's never it, it's the world's most used commodity absolutely right uh, so while there were many many applications uh, which we could look at and you know form a business model around uh, very early on we got the idea that or a key insight was that consumer industries, mm -hmm. especially say beverage industry, Correct. cosmetics, pharmaceuticals, yeah, uh, they require very high quality water, yeah, and a lot of their sustainability efforts are also linked to brand. Very good. So while the while we were still scaling up, we had uh, you know like low volumes today, like mm -hmm. we had three thousand liters per day. Okay. And our cost is also around four to five cents per liter for okay. water production. Right. So now to make a you know business out of it, we started looking at uh, the uh, beverage and the hospitality sector very good where customers really liked our offering in terms of they were ready to buy our water <laughs> uh, but because still this was still a risky technology you know as per market standards <laughs> uh, for us also it's not been even 12 months till we scale it right? okay oh so we scaled it to 3000 liters per day in september of 23 oh very so good. it's still you know like uh, not past one year where we can be confident and customers can be confident to buy so they didn't want the risk of uh, you know uh, buying the machine or investing in the machine, but they were really wanted to buy our water. Okay. So right. what we started doing was we did a forward integration. Okay. Where we act as a co-packer. Okay. Where along with our machines which make water from. So you do white labeling. We do white labeling. Okay. Very uh, good. But it's like a co-branded product. Co-branded product. Because it has the brand of the customer. Okay. As well as uh, from here is a trademark which that is your customer. Okay. Right. So say uh, Leela Hotel is one of our customers. Very good. And their brand is Ojasya. Ojasya. So it says Ojasya from air, crafted by Urugu. Oh, fantastic. So, so for consumers also, it gives the you know, surety that from air is a brand by under Urugu and they can be confident that this water is coming from air and they can be made aware so of... So like that, uh, how many brand, I mean, uh, uh, companies have uh, tied up with you right sure. now? So as of now, we have around 35 customers. Okay. Yes. Okay. Or everyone in Bangalore. Huh. And uh, we have been uh, serving customers from uh, June of last year. Okay. So uh, right now you are plant is located in Bangalore. Okay. So going forward, what is your game plan to expand it in uh, other cities in India yeah, sure. and uh, across the globe? Correct. Okay. Uh, so we want to reach uh, install capacity of one lakh liters per day in the next twenty four to thirty months. Hmm. Uh, and the idea is that in Bangalore uh, we have you know shown the first of its kind uh, model. Hmm which in, uh, integrates everything together mm. and uh, uh, showing cash flows, regular cash flows, recurring business mm. and we'll be scaling it to around 8 to 10,000 liter per day in Bangalore mm. and then replicating a similar hub across 5 to 6 cities in India. Oh, fantastic. Yes. So okay. primarily, uh, you know, metro cities, tier 1 cities like Bombay, Delhi, Goa, mm. Hyderabad, mm. Uh, Chennai mm. and we're also looking at establishing similar hubs in Middle East and Singapore. Middle East and Singapore. Yes. Very good. So the point is that Prime Minister Modi is very well convinced with the technology and he is a fast adopter of technology. Yeah. Okay. What is the message that you want to give it to Prime Minister Modi? Mm -hmm. Because uh, in India, water is a perennial problem for okay. many people. Okay. So what is the message, message that you want to convey to him? Okay. Okay. So the message we would like to convey is that, you know, like many years back, 15, 20 years back, 
solar PV, solar tech based technologies were on a similar uh, stage where they needed the uh, policy support and you know government intervention also to scale rapidly. And uh, this being an indigenously developed technology, right. that's why India huh. and a startup is doing that. We would really like that help to you know scale it fast right. and also bring the cost down so that it can be made affordable to the broader masses. Okay. While today we have found a commercial model which works for you know uh, hotels and restaurants, hmm. we would like to extend it to residences and even rural remote areas where water is a big problem. Okay. So all the government support we can get to scale it up really fast and make it affordable is what I would like to know. So Sopnil is a very proud uh, Indian and uh, he is part of uh, Make in India journey and uh, we congratulate from NFA Post TV for your great achievement. But having said that, uh, to scale up your company, uh, you already raised uh, 3.5 million. Yes. Going forward uh, down the line five years, how much more you want so that the investor community should uh, queue before you? Sure. Uh, what is what is your expectation? Uh, so immediately we are looking to raise a Series A of about ten million dollars. Fantastic, which will help us reach that one lakh liter per day Very capacity. Uh. And later we are eyeing for more like a you know, thirty to fifty million dollar raise, so that we can put this solution across the globe. Okay. Because water is a problem is something which is not an India specific problem, Absolutely or a developing country specific problem. It's a global problem. And us being at the forefront of new technologies, we would like to lead the way and make sure that you know technology reaches all parts of the world, and that will necessitate that you know we raise uh, that you know large quantum of money as well. So, uh, our dear viewers, uh, we are very happy to talk to Sapnilla, who is uh, solving a civilizational uh, uh, problem and addressing it for the sake of humanity, not with Indian technology and it can be replicated across the globe. Sapnin along with his other two co-founders are leading from the front along with his 70 plus team in India, in Bangalore. It's a locally harnessed technology, harvesting water from the air. Sapnin, congratulations going Thank forward. You. Wish you all the best. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great talking to you. Same. I will ask the certain questions to him. Okay, which will be recorded now. Okay. So, dear uh, Varanay San, uh, we are here at uh, Oravu Labs. Uh, it's a, a Make in India initiative uh, yes. with uh, what you call a technology for harnessing water from air. Yeah, that's How do you feel about this uh, company's journey so far compared with uh, other companies and your vast experience of uh, engagement yes. with the yes. Indian companies? Yes. Okay. Typically, now in India, okay, we, we are promoting Make in India. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay? Then this company is very uh, starting up company. Okay. Just only three years or so. Okay. But within three years, yeah. I think the COVID-19 was oh. there. Okay. Even though they developed this technology in a machine. Uh -huh. And I'm sure this machine, this product, okay, help anybody, okay. Okay, anywhere in the world, not only the India. Uh -huh. okay? uh -huh. I'm so happy to okay. see I'm very watching. Good. And also keep watching from now on. Oh, very yeah. good. Okay. Yeah. So, what about San? Uh, it will have uh, what you call B two C application and also B two B application. Yes. Yes. So, how this company will pan out going forward? Uh, uh, what is your dream? What is your vision? What you are expecting from the founders? Yeah. Yes. Because no, this machine, the water problem is anywhere in the world right now. Correct. But. Situation is different. Mm -hmm. It depends on the country. Yeah, depends right. on the cities. Correct. Yeah. So this company, I'm sure, they will adjust the, the uh, technology to meet their requirement. Okay. okay. Everything is uh, the same. Nothing. No, ne never. Okay. Everything, everyone, a bit different. Okay. So, so while scaling up uh, this kind of a startup, uh, what will be the uh, focus area of the founders? Uh, from your experience, because if they want to become a big company, giant company with a legacy like Japanese companies, what are the fundamental steps they should uh, primarily they should focus on? Uh, I'm watching this company last couple of years, okay. and I recognize this company is actually engineering, mm -hmm. development engineering, okay. not the business, okay. not to focus on the finance. Oh, okay? okay, that's why. For the future, okay, this company becoming conglomerate, big, big company, or not so, I don't know. But I'm sure they will always 
helping or uh, develop the technologies, helping the people. Okay. okay. Very not, good. A, not the money, not the finance. I don't think so. Okay. Yeah. So, Watanabe san is very much happy about the impact that this uh, Oravu Labs is making in India and also outside India. Going forward, we are expecting a lot more installation uh, across the globe so that the company will grow multifold going forward. Thank you, Watanabe san, yeah, for talking to NFA yeah. Positive. Thank you very much. And good luck right. to love. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Dear viewers, uh, in Bangalore, uh, there is a big water crisis. Uh, but what we have in the background uh, is a technology conceptualized by Uravu Labs uh, to harvest uh, water from air. That will become an innovative and a disruptive technology for this uh, perennial problem, not only in Bangalore, but across the globe, where humanity is uh, facing water crisis. So, they have developed uh, a technology stack uh, via which they are harnessing water from moisture that is in from the air and this very machine has the capacity to uh, dispense uh, 2000 liters of water per day. So, you can have uh, a nice drinking experience that too solid water without any contamination. So, that is the technology developed by Uravu from Bangalore, India for the world. Here, reporter Mr. Vijaya Kumar for NFA Posti TV from Bangalore.